This is probably the most unique keyboard I've ever laid my eyes and hands on. There are plenty of boards out there competing against each other for minimalism or who has the most extravagant design, trying to tumble one another into who may sit on the throne of luxury. Have you never imagined yourself on the Iron Throne? But this one here is very, very different from all of those, and not just from the outside. Whereas the other boards try to focus, innovate, and push the boundaries of custom mechanical keyboards, the Swiss has a decidedly simple construction and rather focuses its energy on the one question that was left unanswered for millennia. The one thing that keeps keyboard enthusiasts awake at night. Yes, but what if it would look like a block of cheese? Rest assured, this and many other questions will finally be answered in this video, so a peaceful night is just within reach. But this is also going to be a bit different than usual, not because the keyboards look as if they were matured in a cave for the past six months, but rather because these are prototypes and thus final touches and changes will occur. So not everything you see here today will be exactly as is in the final version. But nonetheless, I will try to break it down into hardware, typing experience, including a sound example, and my final thoughts on this, well, cheesiest of boards. Now, this keyboard is officially called Swiss or Swiss Cheese. That is because it was actually designed in Switzerland and brought to you by Keepwork, a German company that I crossed paths with in the past when I reviewed their excellent Mega. This is, however, a completely new design with two color options to choose from. The yellow one is aptly named Cheese and the striking gray variant is befittingly named Moon. And if you think that's just a cheap cop-out, may I remind you that it is scientifically proven that the Moon is, in fact, made of cheese as well. Everybody knows the moon's made of cheese. Although I was obviously drawn more to the edible looking version, I must say that the Moonboard 2 has won me over quite a bit. It's an incredibly sharp looking kit that screams aggressive synth tones when you look at it. Either one of these will be attention grabbers for sure, luring unsuspecting co-workers or housemates into your vicinity. If you dislike the newfound attention, you may simply cut the cheese to disperse the gathering, whereas the yellow version has the added benefit of being the perfect scapegoat for that. In those situations, you may simply point at it and say, it, uh, it wasn't me, it's the cheese. The construction of this board is an interesting story if you ask me. When you look at the parts individually, it's a bit underwhelming. There's no foam, no silicone, no gaskets, no nothing. This is about as bare bones as it gets. The plate is top mounted with the hot swap PCB holding on below by the switches. And there's a little daughter board for the single centered USB-C port on the back. And that's about it. At first, I was a bit disappointed by this. I caught myself being undeservingly snobby about the lack of fancy springs or any other internal gimmicks. But as we'll hear later, this isn't really an issue. On the contrary, it sounds and feels great. So there's much more here than meets the eye. The biggest attraction is most certainly the top housing. This is where the plot thickens or the cheese matures, if you will. Whereas in the real world, Swiss cheese holes are formed by the bubbly remains of bacteria. These here are carefully and beautifully machined. When I first saw pictures of this board, I always wondered how well these cavities would look in person. To a certain degree, I thought it wasn't even possible. Now, I know nothing about CNCing, but I have been told that the top takes a staggering 5 hours to finish. For a little context, the same machining on the Mega takes just 35 to 55 minutes. It's really something to look at, and it's fun to see each individual bubble react to changes in light, and much like those pictures where there's a million things happening, I caught myself staring and discovering the different arrangements and sizes of the holes. It's also incredibly satisfying to stick your finger into them. It's a bit weird, but luckily I still work from home, so nobody sees me fingering my board. The board will be limited to this lovely HKKB layout, which is a great match if you ask me. It allows for just enough extra holds to make it a bit more interesting than it already is. It will also only come in a hot swap version with a split backspace at the top. I kinda like this, it again adds to the unusual nature of it, at least to me who's not used to this kind of layout. Regarding the availability, this will be sold through an upcoming group buy, the date of which has yet to be announced, but for those who are interested, keep an eye on their Discord and website, which I've linked in the description down below. 
As mentioned, these boards are prototypes, which unfortunately means that some functionality wasn't yet available, or in the case of the yellow version, didn't exist at all. That's why we'll continue the build process using the moon board. But again, the final products will be identical regardless of the color. Looking at the contents of the build, you get a total of five pieces, including the daughter board. The bottom half is a single block of aluminum, with the cheese version having a polished brass weight in the prototype. I've been told that the manufacturing cost for this variant was simply too high, which is why this was regrettably scrapped and won't make it into the final version. So the bottom half of the one you'll be able to purchase, regardless of the color, will be one single piece. You'll also be greeted with this rather adorable looking mouse, even on this grey version, reminding you once again that even the moon is made of the same savory snack. Also, you may have noticed that the bottom pieces on these units do not exactly match with the top. This is again because of the prototyping. The upper halves represent the final finishes on both units and as most of the footage is focused on that, I will not mention it anymore, but keep it in mind. Let's get on with the build though. After adding the daughter board, we get the only special part of the construction, which is the addition of these strips. Now, they are not used for the plate or any other fancy mounting system. As mentioned, we got a very simple top mount. These are added and sandwiched in between the case to reduce the pinging, and from what I can tell, they accomplish that. It also firms up the board quite a bit, a little too much if you ask me. It's a bit hard to see on the footage here, but the bottom piece ends up with a little curvature at the front. This has no impact on typing or stability, but it taints the otherwise perfectly machined construction, something I hope they can fix in the final version. Containing our build, let's have a look at the palm plate, which is held in by four screws with one on each corner, but the keen-eyed will probably have noticed that there are actually eight. This again has to do with the prototyping. The initial construction was different, but in order to give the board a bit more flex, the decision was made to reduce this. Since the final version will be like this, I didn't bother testing out the original concept. Instead, I tried to get as close to what you might be getting when the board starts shipping. It's a very soft typing experience, especially with the palm plate and especially in the middle of the board. There will be an aluminum and brass version too for the parmesan lovers out there that enjoy a firmer experience, and if that doesn't satisfy your hunger, the plate files can be released after the group by hand, so you can start making your own homegrown plates if you want. Mounting the stabilizers was a straightforward process as usual. For this build, I'm using old steps, which I have looped with Crytox 205G0, as well as some thicker dielectric grease around the wires. Now, I don't want to talk too much about the PCB because this is again an early version not representative of the final build. There are features missing and the color will change to a juicy yellow, which I for one very welcome. Although it is said that some green in your food is probably good for you, I do not wish to concern myself with vegetables on this build. I want cheese all day every day, so good on them for keeping up with the theme of the board. But just to clarify, in case you were wondering, the final version will not have any flex cuts, although again, with the way the plate is mounted and the lack of any silicon beneath it to limit it, there's already quite a bit of flex here. For the switches, I'm using my current favorite, which is the Gazoo Boba U4Ts. I loop them with Crytox 205G0 on the switch and GPL105 on the springs, as well as a layer of film to firm up the housing. With the switches added, the rest of the building process was remarkably simple. Connect the daughter board, place the top housing, and close everything up with the four bottom screws. Little note here, the rubbery feet are also not final, so don't pay too much attention to these translucent domes either. As you hopefully will agree, I think it sounds really, really good. The switches contribute to that too, of course, but I was generally surprised when I first started typing on this. There have been plenty of boards that even with a heavy metal housing sometimes still feel rather empty, like there's something missing. Not here. Even though it comes in at just 1.5 kilo fully loaded, which I consider being a light to middleweight custom, it still feels full and dense. I wonder if foam or silicon would make it better, but I really didn't feel like it was needed. It was immediately satisfied. I was also worried that the holes might make typing or resting your wrists on it uncomfortable, but since I never actually touched the rim, this is of no concern, and if you want to add a wrist rest, the holes won't stop you either. Really, they are entirely cosmetic. Of course, there is the chance that they will collect some debris from either you or whatever you are ingesting or ejecting during your late night sessions. But as I had to return these boards, I didn't test their crumble collection abilities, but I'd imagine the pockets could require a more frequent cleansing than your average non-perforated board. 
for the keycaps, I chose to go with very simple options. On the cheese version, I am using Drops DCX Black on White, while on the Moon board, I got the Monokai Series 1. Both sets are a great match, and I think as long as you keep it simple and let the focus of the build be drawn to the board rather than the caps, you'll have yourself a winner. When I initially looked at this board, I was honestly not expecting all that much. I was in for the looks and mostly the looks. It was a funny joke, to be honest, and showing off the yellow version to my friends generated fascination and curiosity, and I feel like that's what a lot might write it off as. A funny gag. This is unfortunate, because underneath it, it's strangely full-bodied. Like the cheese it imitates, it's full of holes, but tastes great nonetheless. But the lack of buzzword features make it not as marketing-friendly as others. And again, people including me might overlook it for that, which they shouldn't. That being said, as much as I was surprised that I liked it, I too feel like that it's a little behind its time. Maybe it's unfair to compare it to boards from companies that try to push the limits of how customs are built these days, but then the question arises, in what price bracket are we moving here? Because those super advanced customs come with super advanced prices. Another point to think about is, if it sounds good and feels good, does it even matter how it's built? Maybe that's why it's so charming. This isn't a Michelin star dinner, one with flavors so advanced your palate is still computing hours after it's scanned the food on the way in. Maybe this board is like the cheese in a burger you get after you help your friend move. It doesn't have the best meat, nor bread, nor the best cheese, but damn does it put a smile on your face when you bite into it. And maybe that's what this board is. It's the one that puts a smile on your face. Not because it's the best in the world, but because sometimes all we need is a little comfort food. Hey, thank you so much for watching this cheesiest of videos. I hope you liked it and I thank Keepwork and Bregoli for sending me these prototypes to try out. I look forward to seeing this come to life and maybe witnessing other people playing around with it and getting a smile when they do so. Switching topics and rewarding those of you who are still here, we are just about to enter November. With that, it is time to announce this year's giveaway, which is, behold, a QK65. Nah, I'm just kidding. It's it's not a QK65. It's um it's three QK65s. That's right. I'm giving away three of these. This is not sponsored by QR the Keys, but I still want to thank them because it wouldn't have been possible without them. It's open worldwide, so you may enter from wherever you are. So how do you enter? Very easy. Along with this video, the 2022 Q&A post went up on the community tab, and all you got to do is add your question as a comment on the post. Or not, because if you have no question, that's fine too. Just comment and you'll enter the raffle. At the end of December, I will publish the Q&A video answering all of your questions, as well as announce the three winners. If you want, you can also check out last year's Q&A. Anyway, I so wholeheartedly thank you all for watching and joining, and I hope to see you again in the next one. So until then, have a good one, and bye.